Good morning. It's the 1st of September. It's the start of the autumn fall season. It's time to get dressed, time to get the gear for a great season to come. I am wearing today a coat from Arcturus Valence Collection. It's perfectly fitting for me. It takes care of me in my city or in my outdoor life situations. In my hand, I'm having the new Spartan watch. It's my companion, my partner, whenever I want to do my activities. It takes me anywhere and it tracks all of my sports performance. In my bag, which also comes from Arcturix Valence Collection, I have my tennis racket. I also have my running gear from, from Salomon and I have my cycling shoes from Mavic. Why? because I need to get prepared for the coming great winter season. I will ski, and I will ski on Atomic and Salomon gear. I am today's consumer. I do many things. I don't stick to one single activity. I change, I try, I want to go for it. Hence, I do multiple things. I'm also mixing my sports life with my personal life. I wear the things I wear for sports, also in the city. I express myself in a certain way. I buy anywhere, anytime, whenever I want. And I want to tell my stories, my achievements, to my friends, families and colleagues. Today, I'm telling to you. My name is Heike Dagala. I am the CEO of Amer Sports since 2010, and I welcome you to the company Capital Markets Day of 2016. And now I will take off this coat. <laughs> Here we go. What we'll do today, our theme is to talk how we are on the glide path to our three and a half billion target and how we plan to go even beyond. Specifically, what we will cover today is first, we we'll show that our strategy continues to deliver. Secondly, we confirm that we are on the glide path and now even organically. We'll show a lot of the building blocks. How, how do we gonna get there and why do we think we will get there organically? We talk about how we enable the further acceleration through ongoing productivity and targeted restructuring. We need to renew ourselves. We need to flow our resources and capabilities into the areas where we see growth, where we see more att attractive opportunities. We also show that our glide path continues to create value and especially the organic acceleration creates significant value. And then we talk a bit about what else, because it's not that this company will stop at three and a half billion. We want to go beyond and we're working on it, but today, nothing firm yet, but it's there, it's in the cooking. Before I talk about that, let me remind us every year about our sustainable growth model and our portfolio logic. This is important, this guides our strategies, our operations, our decisions, day in, day out in the company. We have four components. Every year, we want to grow the company top line. The growth can come from organic or from strategic acquisitions. As always, we prefer organic. We prefer organic because we know what we have. <coughs> Secondly, annual profit and cash flow improvement. And profit can come from growth or from cost cutting. We are not in an austerity mode. We want to grow. However, we want to be disciplined with our cost. We invest for the future. We never go for one year full maximization of short-term results. We don't do that because that's not sustainable. Every year we invest sufficiently back into the business to make sure that tomorrow is good and better than today. And finally, we do continuous renewal and productivity improvement. We want to shift the company toward areas of faster growth, higher profitability and better asset efficiency. We got three distinctive sources of profitable growth. The three buckets are organic, game-changing learning, and M&A. 
Let me cover them one by one. In organic, we talk about growing the core. The core for us is the core equipment. It is what the sportsman, the athlete, needs for his or her everyday sports activities to improve performance. It's the heart, it's the core. That keeps us authentic. That keeps us respected. We are there where performance matters. Once we are respected there, once we lead the sports, we can then expand. We leverage that authentic equipment position into soft goods, into services, into surrounding the consumer, the athlete, with more commercial solutions. Whilst we want to grow, we also have issues. So sometimes we have underperformers, if we have an underperformer, we are disciplined and we are patient. We seek to fix the underperformers. And if we cannot do that, we bite the bullet, we eliminate the bleeders. Game-changing learning, we invest a lot into things like digital, into new consumer habits and practices, creating new sports, creating new things. That's game-changing. We want to change the game, not only work on the materials incrementally, not only make things incrementally slightly better, we work on things which will change the game. You'll see some examples today. And then, of course, M&A. If we can be a better owner for any company or asset or brand, of course we are interested. But being a better owner really means that we would and we could create better value than somebody else. The sources of profitable growth, here are four examples, just bringing that a bit to life. So growing the core, and on the left you see there are the, the core activities in the heart of the activity. We bring that to the city life, exactly the same design, the same performance, the gear does everything the same, but of course it's tailored to your everyday life. Game-changing learning, you'll see today examples, of, for example, our digital, digital uh, uh, football, we just introduced our digital basketball. We are changing that game. That game will never be the same anymore. And then M&A, and then the example here is the acquisition of Louisville Slugger. Our long-term portfolio aspiration and our logic. We got three areas that we report as a company. Those are the three core areas. Outdoor, ball sports and fitness. In outdoor, we want to be a global leader in the grand outdoor sports, and the priority clearly is growth. We want to be a global leader and game changer in selected ball sports, and there, because we have come out of a turnaround situation, our priority still remains cash and profit. And then we want to be on the podium in global, especially commercial fitness, and there the priority is growth, given that we have been able to turn around the profitability. The strategy we have had in place and we have in place has continued to deliver. So let me give just a quick update where we are in our, uh, in our glide path, on our glide path. Since 2009, we have steady annual top line growth. Last year, in this very meeting, in the Capital Markets Day, we say that we come out of a turnaround situation and we now move becoming a growth company. That is now happening, so we have continuous top line growth. And that top line growth has also fixed our profitability, which continues to improve. On top of that, our balance sheet has been significantly improved and it's, it's today in a good shape. Looking a bit more into the strategic building blocks, where has this turnaround and this continuous improvement come from? They come from our where to play and how to win choices. They come from our building blocks and strong execution. So one by one, apparel and footwear, 2009 was a less than 300 million business for us. Now we are approximately 1 billion. Arcturix has been, is up five times since that. Salomon has doubled, and it used to be 50% soft goods, today it's 75% soft goods. Sunto was EBIT negative, we have doubled it in size, and EBIT is today at the target level. Cycling is up 1.6 times, Precor was bleeding, today sales are up two times versus starting point, EBIT at good level. Wilson team was a bleeder, a low, low EBIT, we doubled the sales, EBIT is at target level. 
winter sport equipment, gross margin. The winters have been difficult. It's been difficult to go for growth, but you look at our gross margin. Behind our business model change, we are much more agile, we are much more flexible, and hence our gross margin has ramped up, or we have ramped it up from 40% to 46. China, from 10 million to more than 100 million this year. Business to consumer was basically non-existing. Today, it's already 8% of the group and continues to grow. Connected devices, digitally connected devices, well, we had nothing five, six years ago, now more than 10% of the group. So these are transformational things. These are the building blocks. They have worked. Not everything has worked. There's plenty which has not worked. So we have continued to tackle challenges. We have tried, we continue to try, and we're getting better, but not everything is always a success. Weather conditions have been challenging, as you know. So our solution to that challenge has been to become a four-season company. We have deliberately developed ranges and put in place capabilities to become a year-round company, spring, summer, much more than before, because we used to be so much winter dependent. Simultaneously, the winter sports equipment business model change. That's given us a lot of uh, capability, capacity, to, uh, to ability to handle the challenging winter conditions. Then pressure in several sports categories. In order to, to cope with that, we, uh, we pursue operating op expense and working capital discipline. We have exited action sports. It was difficult for us. We are developing new business models, for example, for baseball. We go today directly to selling to teams, to organizations, colleges, because we know that the landscape continues to change. We have developed a significant capability for that. And then industry consolidation, where it's been right, we have acted, we have, we've been there on the consolidation side, for example, in baseball. Retail landscape has disrupted a lot, and uh, for that we have changed our go-to-market significantly over the past five years. Today, we are well organized for the global strategic customers. We have commercial excellence, we have all the KPIs, we run a drumbeat, and it's working better. We run in-store excellence, we run joint business plans with our top customers. Simultaneously, we have omnichannel acceleration. We have organized ourselves for one go-to-market. We used to be in silos, so we put wholesale and direct-to-consumer uh, separately. Today, it's under one leadership because the consumer is seamless. The consumer is navigating anywhere, anytime, seamlessly. We can't be siloed. Country, risks, currencies, financial markets, we tried to our best ability to mitigate the disruptions in Russia and Latin America. We, have, we put in place contingency planning all the time. The example would be hedging. We hedge for the long term in order to make sure that we can operate with visibility and with a baseline rather than the, uh, needing to change everything day by day. And then long-term funding. We fund our glide path. We make sure that we are funded all the way to the end of the glide path because that gives us the basis for planning and the security which we need. So, we are well positioned to continue to deliver. We have the track record and we believe that uh, the trends offer us significant further opportunities. You think about today's consumer. Today's consumer is multi-activity, goes for fitness, health, wellness, lifestyle. It's trendy, it's uh, pop to be healthy today. You go anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, it's exactly the same. Outdoor and sports, outdoor-minded. People live in cities but want to do outdoor things. They also want to mix that, what they want to do and what they can do. So activity and lifestyle are getting mixed. Digitalization, it's happening. People are, are doing their metrics, they're doing their things, and uh, it's a big trend. We are onto it. Consumer habits and practices, multi-activity, omnichannel shopping, anywhere, anytime, personalized experiences, services, significant opportunities, and then finally urbanization, megacities and emerging markets. If we go back to our last year's priorities, the 2015 priorities, we called out five acceleration areas. So apparel and footwear, we said we want to grow it to one and a half billion by 2020. We said that the United States, where we are punching below our weight, 
we want to get it to one and a half billion. China, where we still are relatively young, we want to grow to 200 million. Business to consumer, we say that uh, you know, now we're starting to be at 200 million, we'll need to get it to 400 million at least. And connected devices and services, we see such an opportunity there, so we called out a target of 600 million. This year, 2016, confirms that the acceleration is on, underway. So if you look at the last column, a parallel footwear, we believe that we are at an 8 10% growth for the total year, especially for the second half of the year. The market is very uncertain following a very difficult winter, so the trade inventories are high. It's difficult to predict. Nevertheless, we see that there is dynamism in our business. And if I look into spring-summer uh, 17 order book pre-orders, the momentum is continuing, so we are on to it. United States, 8 to 10 percent growth, significantly accelerated versus our historical past. And, you know, despite the disruptions in the retailer landscape, we are on to that growth, which is then sufficient to take us to our target. China, we continue to grow more than 20 percent year on year. Business to consumer is up more than 25 percent and connected devices and services is up more than 20%. So these acceleration priorities since last year, they are working. They are working for us, we are onto it. If I then look a bit more, how do we plan to get to our, new, uh, to our target or revised target, which is the th three and a half billion organically? So let me show a couple of building blocks. You know, on all of these areas where we see that the potential is there, Let's look at uh, what the billing blocks look like. First, last year we introduced the targets and uh, the billing blocks were sufficient to take us to 3.3 billion. So last year we say that we will need M&A worth approximately 200 million in order to deliver our, our target. And uh, based on what we know, based on what we have achieved, also the visibility we have on the future billing blocks, we believe now that we have sufficiency to deliver the target organically. So, the typical areas, the areas you've seen before, in apparel and footwear, we will go beyond one and a half billion. And the building blocks, the new building blocks, are, they are built on what we knew already. We are just going to do more and better. So in that case, Arcturix continues to extend it and expand its range. We go in for seasonal balance. We're entering into new segments. You will see footwear, you will see new uh, sports coming from our line. And then, of course, balancing the male-female offering, which is a significant opportunity. We will open many more stores. So now we have qualified the, the Arcturix uh, own retail model. It's profitable. It's working for us. Now we have the confidence. We can ramp it up. Over the past two years, we were still in the qualification mode. And here, the focus is clearly in North America and China. Salomon has a new brand positioning. Salomon has a new brand equity. If you go to their website, it's totally new. We have ramped it up. A lot of good things. We, we talk about one Salomon today. Previously, we divided into three distinct categories who went a bit too distinct. Today, it's one, one story to the consumer. We are expanding in multiple sports, but clearly Salomon has significant opportunities to capitalize on its strength in trail running. Hence, we are pushing more and more into city everyday running and related activities. And whilst we do that, we continue ramping up our capabilities. Our organization today is very capable in apparel and footwear. A couple of examples on the left side is our, our collection in a city environment. It's bringing that outdoor-inspired uh, lifestyle into the city environment. On upper right, you see our uh, Salomon running in the city environment. And, and on the right corner, you see a total head-to-toe collection. There's Salomon apparel, Salomon footwear. There is Sunto, everything nicely colored for one activity for the consumer to have a head-to-toe solution. It goes beyond the shoes. It goes beyond the apparel. We have solutions, services, we have soon to for it. So we, we, we are focusing on running. On the lower side, in the middle, there is a store picture. That's Arcturix in, in Japan, that's in Kobe. And then uh, on the right is the new Arcturix footwear collection, co-developed with our people in Salomon. They know so much about footwear. U US and China, further acceleration. 
The new building blocks clearly are distribution expansion. We are building a lot in the megacities, in the epicenters. Right now, we are opening own stores in places like Chicago, in New York. We will go to Los Angeles, we go to San Francisco, we are already in Boston, we are in, in Denver, we are in Washington DC, and we're looking at where the consumers are, where they live, where they spend, and where they do their activities. With that, it's a faster store opening. New proven business model in baseball, I mentioned it already, we have changed the game, we go directly to colleges, we go directly to teams, and uh, we have prepared a capability to service them in a unique and distinct way with a full portfolio offering. Anything they need for baseball, we got it. And then Precore. Precore is now expanding quickly into new fitness segments and channels. The Chinese market is very distinct. The United States market is very distinct. We are expanding into those new segments. A couple of examples. On the left side is our head-to-toe collection for baseball. We can really yeah, provide a full service to any team and we can sell directly in the United States. On the right side, there's a Salomon store window from Shanghai and you can actually see that it's a running store. It's a running store from Salomon. It's in the center of Shanghai. And on the, in the lower part, there's an Arcteryx shopping shop from Asia as well. And then a couple of examples from Precor. We are entering into new segments. On the left side, it's our first entry into the budget segment, low-cost operator, which is giving us a significant expansion opportunity. It's a tailored lineup for one of the largest customers in the world or operators in the world. And on the right side, it's the spinning bike, which we have here. We, ha we arrange a significant, a massive spinning event in uh, Shanghai, more than 100 people spinning together, and uh, spinning is hot, we are onto it, and we have the asset to do that. Business to consumer, we want to keep pushing further. We see that uh, we are, our track record is now good, our growth, growth rates are attractive, and there's more opportunity. So last year, we say that we would open approximately 20, per, uh, 20 new stores per, per year. This year we know that we can do more, so we are now taking that up to at least 25. We seek even more, but that's always subject to real estate availability and of course capacity to do a good job. Don't get undisciplined, we want to stay on the track and, and be disciplined. At the same time, we are all the time improving same store performance. So not only growing by a new opening, but your like-for-like like need to improve and we have good solid year-on-year like-for-like -like improvement. E-commerce, we have new brand country combinations still coming into the pipeline. Canada, we just went live. Japan went live this morning. Japan went live just a few hours ago, so you can now, if you want to buy from the Japanese website, it's open for you, so please go and shop. Sports Tracker, that's our service. We, we are now building there a multi-brand store. So we are looking at where we touch the consumer. We always want to provide an opportunity for conversion. We expand in customization. So we, we custom, we tailor products to the consumers and consumers are willing to pay extra for that. We are ramping up our consumer database. We have the skills and capabilities for that put in place. And we now have, have the integrated uh, omnichannel go-to-market, combining both wholesale and direct-to-consumer so that the consumer sees one story, one offering from the company, not distinct by channel. A couple of examples, B2C acceleration. On the left side, you see our Louisville Slugger lineup. You can tailor your, your, your Slugger bat any way you want today as a consumer, and consumers like it. We developed this capability on wheels on gloves. We qualified it, we're selling it online. Once it was successful, we rolled it over to the Marini Bats. Once we did the Marini Bats, we rolled it over to, uh, to Louisville Slugger, then we rolled it over to our skis. You can do the same with Atomic today. You can do the same with Salomon today. You can do the same with Zunda today. So customization, once we learned it, we made it a transversal capability. On the right side, that's the new Japanese website. It's taken, the picture was taken yesterday and it went live today. That's the Arcteryx website. Connected devices and services, we want to keep driving that. So the new building blocks clearly 
are soon to embrace core. If you look at the pipeline of new in innovation and initiatives coming from soon to embrace core, we never had anything like what we have today. We have invested a lot of money into it. We borrowed from our bottom line for a while in order to make sure that the pipeline is robust. Spartan is a good example of that from Sunto, that's the new collection. And then on Precor, we have plenty. I think we have more than 50 new products hitting the market this year. Of course, not everything from January, they come gradually, but especially in Q4, we have a significant rollout planned. Outdoor running, fitness service content, we are onto it. All of the brands are, are now engaging with the consumer with real content. We can even sell services to the consumer today. Small, but we're learning fast. Then the digital pilots who are for, for, for Wilson, the Wilson X, connected footballs, connected basketballs, and finally, consumer database. We're investing into it, we're investing into digital in order to be able to sell trade the consumer in, up and across our portfolio. Get a consumer who is a runner to buy both Salomon, Sunto, maybe why not Arcturix and so on. A couple of examples of accelerated connected devices. You see the, the picture there on the left side. That's the Sunto Spartan, which we started to ship just a few days ago. Below it is a service, we call it the heat map. So Spartan comes with a lot of sport-related services which are very engaging and give the consumer the reason to keep coming back to our website. On the right, shown already the pictures of the connected footballs and basketballs, and on the, on the lower side, the Salomon Mountain Academy. As we invite consumers to tough places, beautiful places, but sometimes dangerous, and so we also need to teach them, we give them services, we give them whatever education they need, so they are fully equipped, not only with the equipment, but also knowledge to go to places where we invite them. We believe we are well positioned to deliver the 2020 targets. And just to remind, the net sales tar target is 3.5 billion, profit, annual profit improvement ahead of top line growth. Cash flow conversion remains at the 80% uh, level, and net debt EBTA at three or below. So those are unchanged. With that, I would uh, like to hand over to Jussi to go through a financial review. So Jussi, please. Thank you, Heikki, and good morning, everyone. So in the next 10, 15 minutes, I walk you through the plans we have, how to fund this organi organic acceleration, and then also why we consider organic acceleration being so attractive. When I'm walking you through, I'm wearing on my S-Lab speed, all, all black Salomons. These are perfect for office life, and also if you like to run with style. Then before going to these funding plans, I will show you our track record of organic growth funding. Here you can see sources and uses of the funds from 2010 until the end of Q2 this year. Of course, the biggest part of our funding is coming from operations, but more importantly, you can see that more than half of the total funding has been invested back in organic growth drivers, i.e. in CapEx and in working capital. Roughly one-third we have returned to the shareholders, and then roughly 10% used for acquisitions, which is mainly then funded from external sources. So therefore, we can say that it's not only sustainable, but it's rather stable also. Whilst investing steadily into profitable growth, we admittedly are borrowing from the bottom line, like Heikki said. You can see that our profitability improvement has been growth and gross margin driven. Over the past six, year, six years, we have succeeded to improve our gross margins by, by over 500 basis points. That's the, what we have done is that we have succeeded to have more OPEX efficiencies, which we have then invested back into growth. And therefore, our relative OPEX base is rather flattish there over the time period. Combined with the use of funds and our ongoing investments back to the business, the logic there is that we are a strong believer of organic growth we believe that in the long term, that's the most sustainable way to improve profitability. 
Heikki already mentioned that this 3.5 billion uh, top-line target by 2020 will remain unchanged. And whilst last year we still planned uh, to close the gap of roughly 200 million there through targeted acquisitions, now we have billion blocks in place for organic, organic cap closing. There are three reasons why we are so strong believing in organic acceleration. First, the existing building blocks, what we have in place, we can scale up them further, i.e. this kind of internal synergy benefits are already built in. Secondly, organic growth, it supports our financial targets, both for profitability and for cash flow. And thirdly, it improves our asset efficiency much better than the acquisitions, i.e. they are driving higher return on capital employed. This kind of organic growth and how to fund it, it's not coming for free. It requires a lot of upfront investment. It's not a as you model. And therefore, that combined with our unchanged profitability target involves us to run ongoing productivity improvement. How we are driving ongoing productivity improvement, we have a business-specific investment logic. You can see the logic here on the right. And the fund allocation logic is pretty straightforward and simple. The businesses where we have the highest potential can invest back at full top-line growth rate. But the businesses where the growth potential is low, or we can see that it's even uncertain, we are at low or even at zero overhead growth uh, mode. On top of this, we still have untapped potential in our scalable platform so that we can drive further scale and synergies through that. On top of ongoing uh, productivity improvement, we do have restructuring also in our toolbox. We are continuously looking for restructuring, for renewal, and for better resource allocations. I'm not going into the details of the program we announced yesterday, but during our strategy process, we have identified we have restructuring potential there to lower our break-even points, to improve factory utilization rates, to restructure our operations and distribution footprint, and to renew our go-to-market model more to integrate, uh, more to omnichannel structure. So these are the areas where restructuring will happen. The final part of restructuring, so we are targeting 20 million annual cost reduction, once fully implemented by end of 2017. What is important to understand, that this is not a short-term profitability improvement program, but long-term OPEX and CAPEX reallocation program. I therefore, we are investing back those savings we are getting through restructuring. Approximately payback time for this restructuring is roughly one, one, one year to uh, 1.2 years. And the one-time restructuring expenses will be recorded in the uh, second half this year and uh, first half 2017. So that's about funding. Then why we believe that this restructuring is driving uh, value better than acquisitions. First of all, the gap that we had, 200 million on the top line, that gap requires much less capital employed versus acquisitions, less than half what we have considered being a normal, normal capital requirement in, in acquisitions. Therefore, it's much more asset efficient. Secondly, we have a much shorter payback with our own organic investments, even including those one-offs than in acquisition. So combining higher asset efficiency and short payback, payback time there, we are driving better return on capital employed through organic acceleration. And we have even a track record for that. Here you can see that how we have, how we have driven both components of return on capital employed, both profitability and asset efficiency there. So that in this organic acceleration glide path, it will take us to the northeast of this matrix, i.e. over 20% return on capital employed by 2020. So that's about 3.5 billion. As Heikki mentioned, we have even higher ambitions. And whilst this 3.5 billion, 
3.5 billion uh, building blocks is based on proven organic building blocks. We are continuously seeking for additional building blocks and acquisitions for this 4 billion. We haven't set any specific deadline when this 4 billion will be reached due to the fact that that glide pad is not yet populated with the building blocks. Therefore, we said it's five plus year. As said, acquisitions, they remain in our toolbox with unchanged logic. So we are looking for consolidation, like we did with Louis Vuitton. We are looking for acceleration. We are looking for capabilities, like we did with Envy, like we did with Sport Tracker, and like we did with Queenox. And then we are looking also for scale benefits. Financial logic of acquisition follows our sustainable growth model. Are you getting part of the Amersport family? Acquisition needs to drive faster growth, better profitability, and higher asset efficiency. When it comes to acquisition or transactions themselves, our target is not to dilute company multiples. Only if the low-hanging benefits whether they are synergies, capabilities, and the likes, are so visible that we can, we can invest and get a very short payback time there. Then we can go above the company, company valuation multiples. So when we are acquiring, we need to have, ext or when and if we are acquiring, we need to have long-term funding in place. So we have succeeded now to extend our long-term funding so that it's well synchronized with our glide pad. The new issuances what we have in place, they are all of five plus years. And at the same time, we have significant savings in our financing cost. We have succeeded to push down our average coupon by 150, 200 basis points versus the situations what we had still in 2014. The reserves what we have at the moment, 380 million, are well in place. And when it comes to reserves and especially uh, leverage capacity, this organic acceleration will give us more headroom for transactions in future. You can see here that just following our organic plans, what we have in place, we are more than doubling our funding, funding leverage capacity there under the current netted EBDA target. Where we can use this leverage then for sure is that we can continue with our sustainable, steadily increasing uh, dividend policy, and then we can ensure that we have sufficient firepower in place for potential acquisition towards the ambition level. That's about financing part of, of, of the glide pad. And I will hand it back to you, Heikki, for wrap up. Just to recap the presentation here, we hope that we delivered in a very short, uh, concise format an overview that our strategy has continued to deliver. The results are there, and uh, you understand the logic how we now change the three and a half billion top line target to organic, and you see also the building blocks at the high level where the growth is meant to come from. You see where we, how and, and, and where we enable the, the acceleration through the productivity improvement and the targeted restructuring. Hopefully, you see that the choice that we have made here and we continue to make drives and continues to drive significant value creation for the company. And we don't stop there. We want to go further, but at this time, it's a bit too early and we need to continue working on the plans to go be beyond the three and a half billion.